Oh, wow. I water whipping if the floor way I'm slipping. She gonna do the dishes, she gonna mind her business. This is a pigeon. I feel like Charlie Brown, except I ain't brown. Bitch, I'm green. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So, mini story time on this intro. If you don't want to listen to this story time, skip to this timestamp because it might be a minute. So, me, Max King Moon, Ruby Masterson, aka Rubes, Julie Macfoot, aka Chan, and Dennis Wise Storm had planned this intro out after I used a sacrificial Instagram reel to combine our forces and create what I like to call the Quirky Horse Quartet. Then we had our time set on when we were all meeting up on this shitty game. Game. And then right at the time we were all about a ball gone. Dennis thought he was on Night Star, but his ass was on Night Sprinkles. <laughs> Night Sprinkles didn't want him to do this intro, man. So Dennis switched on back to Night Star. And if you think this is all the story was, oh no, honey, there's more to the story. Just when we were all about to go meet up to where we needed to record in the writing hall, Dennis's fucking power went out. <laughs> When I tell you when this shit happened, I fucking died, bruh. Inside and outside. Even the power didn't want us to make it, and all that was left was this floating corpse in the air. <laughs> so, in the span of two hours, Dennis had a lantern. We all have discussed about coffee, when one of us almost got killed for it once one of us said we didn't like it. Roast Dennis's fridge, made a lot of jokes, waffles, crazy global chat kids, Max getting chased by a potential eight-year-old girl, did a flat show with Rubes and Chan while Max was holding us at gunpoint to tell us to hurry the fuck up. And finally, after a long, periodically time, Dennis's power finally came back on. And we finally managed to do this intro after Dennis's power went out. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, despite all this happening in a span of two hours, this was a lot of fun. And I'll probably do collab intros again for videos like this, if it fits. So I just want to say thank you, Dennis, Max, Chain, and Rubes for helping me with this intro that took almost three hours to do. Y'all are really sweet. And a big thank you for Dennis for filming other angles of the intro for me to incorporate into this video. I really appreciate it, dude. And if you want to see more of these lovely people that I'm glad to have as friends check out their channels in the description below all right now that's out of the way let's get into the actual video yeah, yeah. all right now for the actual intro hello everybody my name is moon and welcome back to my channel today is the last video i'll be doing before i go on a video making break for about two weeks as i mentioned a couple of times on social media and in january the month and basically with this video today we're going to be diving into the shit that happened in february and just when i think there will be no chaos oh honey um the chaos continued and she ate <laughs> So as always, if you want to support me further, especially for with how I do my content, check out my Ko-Fi and you can donate me in my tip jar and that sort of thing. I will also be having something coming on there soon. Depending on when this video is coming out, it will probably be coming out a little bit before I have this happen on Ko-Fi. But if this does happen before I post this video, if you know, you know. So check out over there to check out what I have to offer on my Ko-Fi. I post behind the scenes shit and more upcoming plans on what I'm going to do video wise and also some other stuff on there as well. So without further ado, let's get on to weeks one through two.
Before we get into already a big spectacle of the second week, let's get the sad week one out of the way. The best thing from this week is that the snow is back for one more month after the poll, thank god. As for everything else, we finally have the random dressage arena at Steve's finally being used for two show jumping races ran by Ty and his frog. And then we have another repeat of the life warden quest with pointless dialogue for two minutes. And then next we have more imperial tack. Next for February, the month's monthly magic course of this cycle is the Stone Clydesdales, Aranis, and Petra. Then the horses that got retired this time was the Gen 1.5 self promises in Oldenburg. And as usual, we will always give them a moment of silence of respect. So please join me in, in a silence for these two breeds that still haven't gotten updated. Thank you. And finally, we have random boots in the bonus shop. That's the first week. Now let's talk about the second week and uh... Somebody, oh, he needs oh. some milk! Oh lord. So, the second week. The second week. You know what? You'll just see. This week we have the final story snack repeat, except this time the portal's finally done after caring for this wife, Rorden, and it's ready. But the problem is, we can't go through it yet because we have to wait till fucking May, according to SSO, that we'll be going back into the main story quest. And then we had basically your usual horse of Yervic race, which I actually was able to do this time since it was able to do for Pasifinos and some other breeds. So I did on my unicorn. And then we have... <sighs> The Gen 3 Morgans. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Now, initially, I was excited to hear that another Gen 2 breed that I really loved was finally being remade. And I was hopeful. However, that lasted for a bit until they came out. So, for the first new horse breed of the year, we got the most unproportionate Morgan horse in the world. Oh! Lord have mercy. Now, according to SSO, this is based on an old ass breed line of Morgan called the Lippin Morgan. The problem is, the in real life version, it's really nice. But the in game version is honestly really butchered compared to the one they looked at. Now, when this horse came out. <laughs> oh god. Well, um, see for yourself. So this time around, we're gonna be basing the horses on a grading system for once in my life, which I'll mention in a bit, and not just put them on a points out of 10 scale after giving pros and cons. So as usual, let's start with the pros. I like some of the coats, more specifically this bay splashed paint, because it looks like me after crying for seven hours after the shit I've been through in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> And I also like this Palomino paint and the silver black as my top three. The Cremello is at an okay for me, even though it looks very much close to a skin Sid the Rat. Why my dumbass said Sid the Rat, not Sid the Sloth? I don't know. <laughs> as for the app horse, it's okay, but it's also just due to the way the tail's done. I know horse tails are like this in real life, but the problem is lately when SSO keeps doing these kind of tails, it doesn't really blend in well with the white. It's just not blending in, so it just kind of just sticks out like a sore thumb. And then the most ugliest fucking coat is this McDonald's Caramel Sunday Muddy Earwax one. Unlike you, my nails snatched, okay? My natural face snatched, okay? My hair- <laughs> So this one's a hell no for me. Everyone else, I will probably get. Just not this one. I just don't know. Is this supposed to be like a flax from chestnut or something? Because this is kind of just, it just looks disgusting. Just looks like it rolled around in mud. And then rolled up here and said, All right, someone buy me. <laughs> Next, some gates are okay. And the idle animations are fine for the most part. Now the cons, which, um, 
Oh lord. The downside on the cults is that they weren't as detailed when they were released. And we'll be talking about this again in March by the way. And it felt like they just slapped on some airbrush paint on a horse and called it a day. Speaking of a horse, let's talk about the damn proportions. So, remember when I said that they went with an old ass breed line and massacred it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to cook this horse. So if you also remember from my lovely top 5 horse list that's totally legit on my channel about a week ago, y'all may have remember I have made comments about the very obvious fucking Sid the Sloth wannabe Arabian alien frog emoji head. This honestly looks like they ripped it off of an Arabian and slapped it onto this horse and basically they just went at it with a couple of cooking pans and called it a day. <laughs> and I also like to point out that in real life version, the head ain't that big. It's cute, but in the game version they exaggerated it way too much to where it basically just looks like its eyes are way too far apart and not natural. It just looks goofy. So if you want pictures of this horse, my advice is do it from any angle except dead on the front because otherwise you're gonna just see an ugh. <laughs> I can't take this horse seriously. And I think this lovely piece of art by Luna Sandgarden can properly sum up the issue with the head. <laughs> Next, the neck and legs look like it was ripped off of the Yorvik warm blood, which with the enlarged Arabian head makes the head stick out more. Then we have the big ass chest and stomach ripped from a Pertron, and lastly we have the ass ripped from the damn Shire. And since this was a common thing pointed out by people on social media, let's see if slapping these breeds that I mentioned all together creates the Gen 3 Morgan. What is that? This is the ugliest thing I have ever done in Photoshop, maybe. <laughs> So because of the huge uproar on the Morgans, just like the Frisians, they will be reworked and fixed, hopefully. So here's hoping they'll get better. Other cons have mainly been the way the tail moves, since for me, it moves like a stick of string cheese. That's the first thing that came to my head. It also kind of moves like a weird wiggly piece of licorice, but it just looks really odd. There's also like a broken leg trot, and the jump kind of look like it's really awkward a little bit here and there and overall the horse feels stiff and robotic. So now that we've talked about the pros and cons, let's go over this new grading system. We'll be having the following categories. Coats, gates, model, accuracy, the real life version, and animations. Animations mainly include the aisle animations, jump, rear, hard stop, and if they have a special gate and or move. The reason why the gates are separate from the animations is because I think with how impactful gates have been from not just successful horses, but also really shitty horses, I think it's important to see how the gates are since horses can have good gates, but a shitty special animation, or good animations, but shitty gates, which we're going to see that a lot with SSO. For starters, coats are a 6 out of 10, some coats I like, and some are a no for me, but overall they all need more detail. Gates are a 5 out of 10, which is not really a surprise considering how it's like some of them are good and some of them aren't so good. Model, 4 out of 10. In real life model accuracy, 3 out of 10. I feel like they weren't really close to the Lipid Morgan, and if I had to say which part was the most accurate, it's honestly probably the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Animations is a 7 out of 10. They were honestly the best thing about the horse minus the rear end jump. And that concludes to a final score of 25 out of 50, which accumulates on a 10 point scale 5 out of 10, which is <laughs> this poor horse. I just feel like they did this breed real dirty. It was a breed that a lot of us wanted, especially in Gen 2, since it was very loved in Gen 2 and we wanted this to be really good in Gen 3. So it's kind of just really similar to once again, another breed we really wanted to look really well in Gen 3 get kind of just fucked up or done dirtied in certain areas. With that being said, that concludes week 2, so let's move on to the other half of February of the month, which, um... <laughs> These last two weeks are the start of SSO updating the championship. So first, let's start with week three. This week, they updated the Moreland Championship and introduced Reputation with a group called Jerk. I forgot what 
and stuff for blind ones, they were a jerk anyway. <laughs> Boy, if you don't- The people in the program give you a rundown on how shit works, let you try the race, and be on your merry way with life. This is where we start to see SSL basically making them themed on stuff, and for the Merlin champ, it's the Bobcat Girls. Basically, with this update, they added a way to practice champs, which is really good, because before, we had to do this from memory, so this helps out a shit ton. They also changed the total price to level a horse from 1 to max level, so it's a bit cheaper, but it's still kind of expensive. Overall, it takes 1k star coins to- to actually level up your horse to max. They also add a player level stat cap to level 25, even though they could have just added a level cap to level 25 in general instead of SSO. Just saying. You're also now able to get clothes from doing the reputation shit for them, and you still have to buy them and that sort of thing. That's really about it on the positives, because the negatives, oh god. So before talking about the champ itself, let's look at me trying this fucking champ. I don't like where this is going. The champ itself is very babified now with being very simple. It's just go for the boost on the ground that came from the Rainbow Pride Festival, move around most of the jumps, look at a airplane fart out pink smoke, and fun fact, at nighttime it can turn purplish green. The snow filter here makes it look worse though. And that's really it. It just felt like it was mainly jump or run around and boost, but even the boost could fling your ass into the wall. At least you get XP from doing the add-on quest though. However, that's not all. SSO thought it was a brilliant idea to go from having chimps go from lasting till I believe it was 2 a.m. server time to fucking 9 p.m. server time. SSO, honey, most of us on this game aren't kids. And even then, no one in their right given mind puts a fucking curfew in an MMO. Nobody. Not only that, for some people, they have jobs or have dinner around that time. Are you out of your mind? Okay. I'm calm. I swear. And so then decided it was also a brilliant idea to change the horse level numbers to adjust to their shitty UI update and to also make lower levels faster, made the max swiftness be 26 oh! and not 27 or 28. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I'm sorry, but... Who wanted this? Did you want this? Because that didn't... Last night, nobody, nobody asked, asked for the damn shit to stop to be lower. Are you crazy? Okay. <laughs> After finding out this shit, this would then in turn create an uproar that was not only within the racing community, but every damn where that could sink anything faster than the Titanic. What more do you want from me? Upward on the curfew, they increased the curfew to 12 a.m. server time, which is slightly better. But honestly, most of the people wanted the old schedule back, to be honest, even up still to this day. It's just once again, as so changing shit no one asked for. And while I like some of the changes, like the clothes and having boosts, as long as I don't get flung into a wall or an object, some stuff they changed was very unnecessary. Besides, all this champ shit we had bugs ranging from a speed bug from the four pinta race just after resetting the high scores to glitching the fuck out horse stats to seeing shit through the floors. But the one that took the cake was what I like to call the great invisible wall of the Baroness racetrack. Oh my god bro. Oh hell no man. 
So if you don't know what an invisible wall is, it's basically a random barrier that either prevents you from going to an area or basically a leftover piece of trash littered on the floor that SSO forgot to clean up afterwards after placing something. And this can even make you feel, oh man, looks like I need to level up more. Or it can make you feel, what the fuck? There's nothing fucking there. It's just a feel left away and life with shape. The problem is, this can also come from bugs, and in this case, in all my 10 plus years of SSO, I have never seen a fucking invisible wall be this shitty and big. Somehow, in God's green earth, SSO managed to leave a big ass dome cube smack dab in the left area of the Baroness racetrack next to the championship that's next to it, making it impossible to even get to the champ area, the fountain, a little bit of the area near the oil field, the side fields, and you can't even complete any of the races or the champ itself. <laughs> This led to people basically praying they could make it to the other side. So in my free time, I tried to see if I could navigate and get on top of it because some people managed to fly. They even fly so high, they can see SSO's bullshit left in the sky. And this is how that went. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this shit was impossible. This wasn't gone until I believe a week and two days, and the day this damn thing was gone, people were never so happy to touch a champ area again until this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. that happened is a long ass start to a week four bizarre discount week in honor of the new champs. The first week had Lusitanos and Illusions and Pasifinos on sale. Give us a new week of stable care and then had discount clothes with most of them still expensive as fuck and not much to offer. I do gotta say they did pick slightly better color choices this time around though so good job. Just wish it was more than that. That's week three so on to week four. In week four the next champ in line is the four Pinta champ and the quests were the same as the more one just again talk about what the theme thing is and just like the Moreland champ they changed them shit and also you gotta try it out but this time I had some help along the way when I tried this champ and the funny thing is I tried it before doing the actual quest on accident so I did it while hanging out with three friends after filming the intro skit and then two of them and myself did this champ so this is how that went Bye, have a great time.
Girl, that party was so live last night. Girl, watch out, watch out, watch out! Hi, have a great time. We all die. <laughs> On a serious note, please check out Melly and Ellie's stuff in the description below to see what they do besides accidentally being in the video. Compared to the Moreland Champ, this was a lot of fun, especially with friends, so it also helped a lot. It had some new stuff, but it was still really fun. Probably my favorite out of this Champ update shit, so I like it a lot. Still need some more challenge, but it was fun. Rip hey, Bale Stampede. For the bizarre horses that were newly added were the English Thoroughbred and Fjord on to the list of Gen 3 horses on sale. I think overall with basically the champ updates, we're gonna talk about this more when we get to March the month. It's mainly been probably like it's something that should be done, but I feel like they could have done better in making it more challenging. Like I think another thing they could have added was having increasing difficulties to the champs and be able to have more variety when doing the champs in different areas. I feel like that would bring a lot to the table. And I think it's just, again, really about how they do things because it is once again probably something that we asked for, but they didn't really execute it that well. So I feel like overall, the champs in this could have been done better, and I just wish they did not touch the championship schedule, because listen, nobody asked for you to touch that schedule or the stats. All they asked was really just please put a level cap on, on the actual level, not the stats itself, a lot of stuff like that. Wait, Court, can I have some of your avocado? Not the avocado eye cream. What did I ask for? What? Did you not just ask for avocado? Yeah, for my salad. What do you mean, Court? We're eating. Read the room. Well, the room said you had crow's toes. Not the crow's toes. So I'm just trying to help. I feel like the best way to do it is to actually follow through on what we want, but not done in a shitty half done way. So now that we are done with talking about what's been going on with the game, let's move on to what's happening outside of the game. Now we'll go over things related to outside of the game. The main things that happened outside of SSO besides the huge uproar on the Morgans and curfew times was a petition and potential backtracking on the Frisians. During week three, a petition was made by Jake aka Ray Lining, which is an outcry on not just the issues with this game, but also the issues with the prices, the way the game is, etc. I'll leave a link here if you want to still check it out in the description or pinned comment because it's important. Throughout the week, it got a total of over 5,000 signatures and this was then sent to SSO, to which they gave this as a response. Boy, if you don't- Meaning, based on the way it's worded, they're not gonna do shit. 
It also just showed further the breaking point for a lot of people with this game. And to not only get that as an answer is ridiculous in itself because there are many issues that still needs to address and fix or else this game is just going to be a desert for real. Then in the February game blog, it just went over the Yorvik Izek boring ass quest from last month and an update on the beta character saying the tech issues were being resolved with linking the players and horse state system together, which we'll also be looking at the state system in March and they also talk about how it'll hopefully help them make better facial expressions and animations with the body types and as we all know with the character update at this point which is praying they don't fuck it up and not have another shitty beta test and instead have a better beta test in the future. Another huge news that I found on Reddit was that they are actually going to be considering adding masculine options customization wise which thank god. I'm hoping this does push them more towards hey we should really consider having male characters in this game but this is also really good that we're actually getting we're gonna do masculine options now so thank you basically this was found in the comment section of under one of sso's posts so this is really good thank god as for any minor things or miscellaneous things that have happened in and out of the game they have finally dropped the gen 2 morgan prices because apparently they forgot to do that before updating gen 2 to gen 3 this is really odd but okay they retrofit more attack onto other breeds and then the only thing happening outside of SSO was that for some odd reason Stacy Place made a tweet responding to someone on Twitter about if the Gen 3 Frisians will be fixed when for some odd reason based on the responses it was initiating that SSO doesn't really know how to tackle the Frisian because of if anyone actually liked them even though 98% of the community said hell no to this disgusting crackhead dog of a creature or if they should make a whole new Frisian SSO also made a tweet saying they will fix the Morgans during week 3, so maybe it should still consider them to fix the crackhead of a dog Frisian into an actual majestic Frisian that we wanted, which I really hope they do work on fixing them because right now, these breeds could have been so much better and they had a lot of high hopes for them to be really good because of not only being a popular beloved breed, but also hopes that the quality of the horses remain high and consistent. Not only that, people gave feedback on the models that they were doing in their work in progress when they were showing spoilers of this, and they didn't even apply said feedback. They were just like, here, we want your feedback. Okay, we're not going to listen to this shit. It's just getting frustrating that we're giving y'all feedback, but y'all are not actually taking it into consideration and actually doing said feedback. Going forward, I feel like overall this month showed just once again how SSO has descended from giving us the things that we wanted, but poorly doing them, or giving us things we didn't want or asked for. At this rate, if SSO keeps making really poor decisions, it'll not only come back to bite them in the ass, but it will definitely affect them as a company over time. With that being said, that concludes February of the month. For those of you who remember from January of the month and a couple of times I mentioned on social media, this will be my last video that I'm doing before going on a video making break for at least two to three weeks. And to sum up my reason why, mentally I've been burnt out and I had a lot of shit happen at the beginning of 2023. And to see a longer explanation, check out January of the month. And it should be towards the end of the video where I go in depth further in a more roundabout summary. Before sending out out, I want to thank all of you for your support and patience with getting this done and for also being incredibly sweet and kind throughout everything. I'm hoping that after my break, I'll be less burnt the fuck out. <laughs> and with what's been happening in March and April at the time of this video, we're in for a ride. Oh my god! A tornado is forming! Bye! I will still be really active on social media since I'm working on some stuff there as well as something for my Ko-Fi and I'll also keep up to date on my community posts. So keep an eye out for that if you want to hear more from me. So with that being said, thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye bye